ago, trillions of dollars ago, thousands of lives ago, just as we predicted. And of course, events, unexpected, at least in their timing, have now burst forth onto the political agenda, onto the political horizon, some of which, as has been said by my friends, pose us difficulties, difficulties which we have surmounted easily in a way which I am also very proud of. You see, it's easy to be in favor of a revolution which overthrows Hosni Mubarak, who in their right mind, I mean, even the American, even Hillary, Barack, the Peace Prize winner, even they're claiming they were in favor of the revolution against Hosni Mubarak. They think we don't have Sky Plus. They think we don't have the ability to work the internet and to read what they were saying almost until the hour that the dictator fell. But it's much more difficult when the drums are beating and the tinny bugle of patriotism is sounding, when the demonization of the foe crescendos, when Mr. Ben was speaking in Trafalgar Square in 1956 against the British invasion of Egypt. Anthony Eden, the British Prime Minister, was speaking in the House of Commons and I quote directly, he asked, who will rid us of the mad dog of Cairo? The mad dog of Cairo was Jamal Abdel Nasser, one of the greatest men of the 20th century, and there's been a whole parade of mad dogs ever since. Some of them admittedly madder and more canine than General NASA. But when the propaganda pumps, the grotesque, no doubt, figure and regime of Muammar al-Gaddafi and invites us to support our own country becoming an empire again. It took wisdom and courage for all of us to say no. And we must have that same wisdom and courage in the challenges that lie ahead. Those of us who've been across this course can smell what's in the air about Syria. We've been here before. We know that this is the softening up period where the dictator is built up, portrayed as some kind of new Hitler, as they all seem to be. And then the question is, well, what are we going to do about the near civil war which now exists in Syria? I'll tell you what we have to do. We have to condemn the Syrian regime's brutality against those genuine seekers of freedom and liberty in Syria, but we have to condemn and refuse any idea that the way to solve this crisis is for the imperialist countries of America and Britain and France to intervene in the internal the BBC, the BBC, the Bush and Blair Corporation, breathlessly, breathlessly informed us yesterday that the Syrian regime was using Apache helicopters, helicopter gunships against its own people. I've always been puzzled by this one, Chris, why it's inherently worse to use attack helicopters against your own people than it is to use Apache helicopters against other people's people. I've never quite understood 